Hello there, in this video I'd like to present the key ideas of Chowdhury, Polatkan, Ramanath and Mithal's paper, An Attentive Survey of Attention Models. This paper provides a thorough overview of attention models and walks you through their various architectures and applications. Here are the key parts of this paper and we'll go over each one individually. Part 1. Introduction. Human biological systems are the perfect way to describe the intuition behind attention. For example, in order to facilitate perception, our visual processing system tends to selectively concentrate on certain parts of the image while ignoring other irrelevant information. Similarly, certain aspects of the input are more important than others in a number of problems involving language, voice, or vision. Some regions of the input image, for example, could be more important for producing the next word in the caption in an image captioning problem. Attention model introduces this concept of significance by encouraging the model to dynamically pay attention to only certain portions of the input that help in the successful execution of the task at hand. Three factors account for the rapid development in modeling attention in neural networks. To begin with, these models are now the state of the art for a variety of activities, uh, including machine translation, question answering, sentiment analysis, and part of speech tagging. Second, they have been commonly used to boost the interpretability of neural networks, which are usually thought of as black box structures. This is a major advantage due to the increasing interest in the fairness, accountability, and transparency of machine learning models in applications that impact people's lives. Third, they help to solve some of the problems of recurrent neural networks or RNNs, such as loss with increased input length and computational inefficiencies arising from sequential input processing. Part 2. Attention Model So let's see what this model actually is. Baudin and others proposed the first use of attention model for machine translation in 2015. Imagine if you want to translate this sentence into French. Before the introduction of attention model, traditional encoder-decoder model was used in neural machine translation techniques. This figure shows a traditional encoder-decoder model. The encoder is a RNN, which takes an input sequence of tokens, for example, x1, x2, and x3, and encodes it into fixed-length vectors, h1, h2, and h3. The decoder is also a RNN, and then takes the single fixed-length vector h3, as its input and produces the output sequences uh, y1, y2, and, and so on, token by token. This standard encoder-decoder architecture has two well-known flaws. First, the encoder has to compress all the input information into a single fixed-length vector that is passed to the decoder. Using a single fixed-length vector to compress long and detailed input sequences may lead to loss of information. Second, it's unable to model the alignment between input and output sequences, which is an important feature of structured output tasks, such as translation or summarization. What does alignment between input and output mean? Each output token is supposed to be more determined by some particular sections of the input sequence in sequence-to-sequence -sequence tasks. However, when producing each output token, the decoder lacks any method for selectively focusing on valid input tokens. Attention model attempts to overcome these problems by allowing the decoder to access the complete encoded input sequence H1, H2, and H3. The core idea is to induce the attention weights alpha over the input sequence to assign priority to the position set where the appropriate information is present. To produce the next output token. The attention block in the architecture is responsible for automatically learning the attention weights alpha i j, which captures the relevance between h i, the encoder hidden state, which we refer to as candidate state, and s j minus 1, the decoder hidden state, which we refer to as query state. Attention weights are learned by integrating an extra feed-forward neural network into the architecture. This feedforward network learns a special attention weights of alpha ij as a function of two states, hi, candidate state, and sj-1, the query state, which are taken as input by the neural network. This function is called the alignment function, which is denoted by a in this slide. As it scores how relevant is the candidate state hi for the query state sj-1. 
This alignment function outputs energy scores, E, I, J, which are then fed into the distribution function, denoted by P, which converts the energy scores into attention weight. This distribution function most generally is the softmax function. These attention weights are then used for building a context vector CT, which is passed as an input to the decoder. At each decoding position J, the context vector CJ is a weighted sum of all hidden states of the encoder and their corresponding attention weights. This additional context vector is the mechanism by which the decoder can access the entire input sequence and also focus on the relevant positions in the input sequence. So, to put it simply, an uh, attention model works like an accounting no notebook. For every query, which is our decoder hidden state, the attention gives us a table which shows us how much attention we owe to each of our encoder hidden states. Part 3. Taxonomy of Attention the paper classifies the attention models based on four broad categories and explains the various forms of attention within each category. Keep in mind that these categories are not mutually exclusive. So how can we categorize attention models based on their number of sequences? So far we've just looked at the case of a single input and its resulting output sequence. When candidate and query states belong to two distinct input and output sequences, this form of attention which we call distinctive is used. A co-attention model works on multiple input sequences at the same time and jointly learns their attention weights to capture correlations between these inputs. For example, in visual question answering, in addition to modeling visual attention on the input image, it is also important to model question attention because all words in the text of question are not equally important to the answer of the question. The input for tasks like text classification and recommendation is a sequence, but the output is not. Attention can be used in this situation to learn appropriate tokens from the input sequence for each token in the same input sequence. This approach is called self-attention. Now, we want to classify attention models based on the number of abstraction levels. Most of the times, attention weights are calculated only for the original input sequence. Single level attention is a term used to describe this kind of attention. Alternatively, sequential attention may be applied on several layers of abstraction of the input sequence. The lower abstraction level's output or the context vector becomes the query state for the higher abstraction level. A document, for example, is made up of, se of sentences which are made up of words. We may extract terms that are relevant in a sentence and phrases that are important in a text using multi-level attention. As another example for an image question answering task, Sun and Fu used stack, stacked attention networks in which multiple attention layers query the image multiple times to eventually identify the exact regions in the image that are critical for the answer. According to the authors, using global image presentation to predict the response yields suboptimal results since the attention is split among several items in the first layers. Higher level attention layers, on, on the other hand, use, that, use the details from lower level attention layers to drive more fine-grained and smaller regions within the image. They also discovered that two attention layers are superior to one, but adding three or more layers did not boost performance. In the third category, the differences arise from positions of the input sequence where, where attention function is calculated. In soft attention, attention weights are calculated for the entire input sequence. This approach has the advantage of generating a smooth and differentiable model, but it is costly when the, output, uh, when the input is large. Hard attention just pays attention to one part of the input se uh, sequence at a time. It means we need less calculations during inference, but the model is non-differentiable, which will need more complex teaching strategies like variance reduction or reinforcement learning. Long and co-authors propose the global and local attention. The global attention is similar to the soft attention. The local attention model, on the other hand, is an intermediate between soft and hard attention. The key idea is to first detect an attention point or position within the input sequence and pick a window around that position to create a local soft attention model. The advantage of local attention is that it has computational e efficiency and differentiability within the window. 
We'll now categorize attention models based on the number of representations as our final form of classification. Generally, a single feature rep representation of the input sequence is used in most applications. However, in some scenarios, using a single feature representation of the input may not suffice for the downstream task. For example, Kayla and colleagues trained attention weights over different word embeddings for the same input sentence to improve sentence representations. In multidimensional attention, weights are calculated to measure the value of each dimension of the input embedding vector. The idea is that by giving each feature in the vector a score, that the features that best reflect the token's specific meaning in any given context can be selected. Part 4. Network Architectures with Attention In this part, we'll go through three important neural architectures that are associated with attention. First is the encoder-decoder framework. Second, we'll look at the transformer, which uses attention to get around the sequential processing aspect of recurrent models. And last, memory networks which extend attention beyond, beyond a single input sequence. These are several neural architectures that make comprehensive use of the attention model and have also been common in a number of applications. However, investigating the use of attention uh, in different neural architectures is a hot topic of study and the number of uh, neural architectures that use attention model is rapidly increasing. Let's start with the encoder-decoder architectures. The earliest use of attention was as part of RNN-based encoder-decoder framework to encode long input sequences. Consequently, attention has been most widely used with this architecture. An interesting fact is that attention model can take any input representation and reduce it to a single fixed length context vector to be used in the decoding step. As a result, it is possible to decouple the input representation from the output representation. This advantage could be used to implement hybrid encoder decoders, the most common of which are convolutional neural networks CNNs as an encoder and RNN or LSTM as a decoder. Image and video captioning, visual question answering and voice recognition are all examples of multimodal activities where this architecture comes in handy. However, not all problems with both input and output are sequential uh, can be solved with the mentioned formulation. Pointer networks are another class of neural models with the following two differences. First, the output is discrete and points to positions in the input sequence. And second, the discrete categories of output elements are not determined in advance, but depends on the variable input size. Rather than using attention to blend hidden units of an encoder into a context vector, the pointer net applies attention over the input elements to pick one as the output at each decoder step. Recurrent architectures rely on sequential processing of input at the encoding step that results in computational inefficiency as the processing cannot be parallelized. Transformer architecture which completely removes sequential processing and recurrent connections was proposed to fix this. It relies only on self-attention mechanism to capture global dependencies between input and output. Transformer architecture achieves significant parallel processing, shorter training time, and higher accuracy for machine translation without any recurrent components. This architecture has become a state-of-the-art approach for many mainstream NLP tasks. It has been used to solve a wide range of NLP problems, including OpenAI's GPT and GPT-2 for language modeling and BERT for language representations. But the applications of Transformer is, is not limited to NLP tasks, and there has been an increasing interest in the use of attention models in a wide vari variety of applications, such as computer vision and reinforcement learning, making this architecture a significant milestone for attention. This diagram shows the Transformer architecture. It is made up of a stack of six similar encoder and decoder layers with two sublayers the feed-forward network layer and the multi-head self-attention layer. Inside each sub-layer, self-attention is used to connect tokens and their positions within the same input list. Further, attention is used is known as multi-head because several attention layers are stacked in parallel with different linear transformations of the same input. 
This helps the model to capture various aspects of the input and improves its, its expressiveness. Feed-forward network is applied independently to each position in the input sequence, increasing parallel processing. Since the, uh, since the input is sequential, the model must use the temporal part of the data. But components that collect this information, for example, RNNs or CNNs, are not included. To, to account for this, the transformer's encoder phase generates both content embedding and positional coding for each token in the input series. Finally, normalization and residual connections are mechanisms used to help the model train faster and more accurately. If you want to learn more about transformer architecture, I, rec I recommend you watch Yannick Kilcher's video about transformer model, link to which is available in the description. End-to-end -end memory networks are a general generalization of attention modeling in which instead of modeling attention over a particular sequence, they model it over a vast database of sequences. Applications like question answering and chatbots require the ability to learn from information in a database of facts. The input to the networks is a knowledge database and a query, where some facts are more relevant to the query than others. End-to-end -end memory networks achieve this by using an array of memory blocks to store the database of facts and using attention model to model, to model the relevance of each fact in the memory for answering the given query. Attention has a computational benefit because it makes the target constant and allows for end-to-end -end training through backpropagation. The neural Turing machine, or NTM, often employs a continuous, although smaller, memory representation as well as a controller typically a feed-forward network or LSTM, that controls memory read and write operations. Part 5. Applications Attention models have been a popular subject of research. They have been found to have a substantial effect on task performance in some cases, and in others, they have assisted in the learning of improved representations of entities such as documents, images, and graphs. In the NLP domain, Attention assists in focusing on the relevant parts of the input sequence, alignment of input and output sequences, and capturing long-range dependencies for longer sequences. Modeling attention in neural techniques for machine translation allows for better alignment of sentences in different languages, which is a crucial problem in machine translation. The advantage of attention model also becomes more apparent while translating longer sequences. The longer the sequence, the harder it is to embed all the content and, and alignment information without attention. Attention has been used for, to better understand questions by concentrating on specific aspects of the topic and sorting vast, amount of, vast amounts of impor, information using memory networks to aid in the search for answers. Using the soft attention mechanism, a study made considerable progress in the abstract sentence summarization task. Similarly, in the sentiment analysis task, self-attention helps to focus on the words that are important for determining the sentiment of inputs. Visual attention has become popular in many mainstream computer vision tasks to focus on relevant regions within the image and capture structural long-range dependencies between parts of the image. Visual attention also provides a significant benefit for object detection as it can aid to localize and recognize objects within the image. The deep recurrent attentive writer used attention to generate images. It uses attention to selectively attend to parts of the input image while regenerating some specific scenes within the image in an iterative manner. Since it helps in understanding of relationships between various modalities, attention has been widely used in multimodal applications. Multimedia description is the task of generating a natural language text description of a multimedia input sequence, which can be image or video. Similar to question answering, here, attention performs the function of finding relevant parts of the input image to predict the next word in the caption or focus on a smaller subset of frames for video description. For a speech recognition, it has been shown that without attention, the model significantly overfits the data because it memorizes the training transcripts without really paying attention to the acoustics. 
A speech recognition differs from auto NLP and CV tasks because the input is much noisier, lacks a clear structure, and has multiple similar speech fragments. An attention mechanism has been suggested that considers both the position and content of the input sequence's important fragments. Adapting the attention mechanism to include location assists in the identification of similar or repeated speech fragments and longer input sequences. Another interesting work on human communication comprehension addresses the challenging problem of comprehending face-to-face -face communication, which is a complex multimodal task involving language, vision, and speech modalities. Simultaneously, here, attention is specifically used for discovering interactions between different modalities at each time step. Attention models are used in many other applications as well. The paper has mentioned two more applications for attention models. Many important real-world datasets come in the form of graphs or networks. Examples include social networks, knowledge graphs, protein interaction networks, and the World Wide Web. Attention has been used to highlight elements of the graph, like nodes, edges, and subgraphs, which are more relevant for the main task. Attention has also been used in recommender systems for user profiling, for example, assigning attention weights to interacted items of a user to capture long- and short-term interests in a more effective manner. This makes sense because all of a user's interactions are not related to an item's recommendation, and the user's per preferences are both dynamic and varying over time. To enhance item suggestions, the self-attention mechanism was used to, I to identify the most important items in the user's history. Part 6. Attention for Interpretability There is a growing interest in the interpretability of AI models, driven by both performance as well as transparency and fairness of models. However, neural networks, particularly deep learning architectures, have been criticized for their lack of interpretability. Modeling attention is particularly interesting from the perspective on, of interpretability because it allows us to directly inspect the internal working of the deep learning architectures. The hypothesis is that the, ma the magnitude of attention weights correlates with how relevant a specific region of input is for the prediction of output at each position in a sequence. This can be easily accomplished by visualizing the attention weights for a set of inputs and output pairs. As shown here, visualized attention weights clearly show automatic alignment of sentences in French and English despite the fact that subject, verb, noun locations different, differ from language to language. This figure shows that attention model is able to focus on relevant word in the input sequence while generating output for the summarization task. In this example, the input word combating has a high attention weight for the output word against which demonstrates that attention model can capture word relationships for summarizations. This is another figure that shows attention weights can help to recognize users' interests. User 1 seems to have a preference for cartoon videos, while user 2 prefers videos on animals. As another example, here we observe that with the help of attention models, we can provide extensive lists of visualizations of the relevant image regions which had a significant impact on the generated text in the image captioning task. Finally, in a speech recognition task, attention between character output and audio signal can correctly identify start position of the first character in audio signal and attention weights are similar for words with acoustic similarities. Conclusion In this survey, Authors discussed different ways in which attention has been formulated in the literature and attempted to provide an overview of various techniques by discussing a taxonomy of attention, key neural network architectures using attention, and application domains that have seen significant impacts. They also discussed how the incorporation of attention in neural networks has led to significant gains in performance, provided greater insight into neural networks inner working by facilitating interpretability and also improve computational, uh, computational efficiency by eliminating sequential processing of inputs. This survey 
helps to clarify the various ways in which research has been conducted on this subject, as well as how techniques established in one domain can be extended to other domains. I hope you find this video educational and informative. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.